In chapter 10, we saw three different major hypothesis tests for three different, well, four different parameters, actually. So we want to take a moment and kind of regroup and make sure that we understand all the different types and when they show up, which type. All right, so the first one we learned was 10.2. That was for a population proportion. So when you see percentages and proportions start flying around a problem, that's 10.2. Okay, so the population proportion, remember that the sample statistic for that is the sample proportion, which we all know is x over n. We learned that back in chapter 8. Okay, so then when you look at the hypothesis test, let's scroll up and look at this test. The test statistic is right here, that z0 equals p hat minus p0, all that good stuff. Now remember, you don't have to find that by hand or anything. Um, your calculator will find that for you. Speaking of which, the calculator entry for those is the one prop z test. So let's go back and look at the calculator for a second. So when you're in stat and tests, the one prop z test is number five, right? One prop z test. And it's going to ask you what your p0 is and then your x and your n. And then you're going to tell it if it's a left or it's me a two-tailed test. That's that one, a left-tailed test or a right-tailed test. And there you go. Okay. All right. So that's there. Let me put that into our table. It was number five, which was a one prop Z test, not an int. INT is for intervals. Z tests are for tests. Okay. So what distribution is this using? Well, rather obviously the Z distribution, you can tell because that's the test statistic involved, but it's also showing up here in the critical values if you're using the classical method. Those are Z's, so that's the Z distribution. Now you find those values, the critical values, um, either with inverse norm or the bottom row of the T table. Now if it's a two-tailed test, it's plus or minus alpha over two. If it's a left-tailed test, it's negative z alpha. And if it's a right-tailed test, then it's z alpha. That's what it tells us right in that middle portion right here. It's telling us in this picture that two-tailed is negative and positive z alpha over 2. Left-tailed is negative z alpha. Right-tailed is positive z alpha. Those are the critical values. And you find them with either inverse norm always the left tail area, right? Correct, I should say. Or the bottom row of the T table. All right, so that was section 10.2, proportions. In general, if it feels like the problem's not giving you a lot of information, that tends to be the proportion ones. Just a little side note to you. Okay, then we did a test in 10.3 for the population mean, right? We all know that mu is population mean. All right, that's great. Now, the statistic that we use to test that population mean is x bar. So we assume some population mean is true, and then we're going to use the statistic from a sample to test it. Now, the test statistic for that is in this hypothesis test spreadsheet right here. It's right there. It's t0. So t0 equals x bar minus mu0 over s over the square root of n. Don't forget that mu0 and p0, for that matter, are the assumed from the null hypothesis values. So you assume some p0 or some mu0, 0, 0 goes with the 0 hypothesis, i.e. the null hypothesis. All right, now the test you're using here, let's go back and look at the calculator. Stat, tests, you're using number 2, which is a t-test, right? This one right here. So number 2, t-test. And you have a choice. You can either use data or you can use stats. Data is the one that when you have a column of data sitting in your calculator, right? So if you have stat, edit, if you have some column of data here, then you can use data. If you don't have a column of data, if they just gave you a big paragraph of information, then you'd use stats. All right, there we have it. And you fill in your mu0, that's your null hypothesis value. And then you would fill in your list for if you're using data and then your type of test down below. We always leave frequency as one in this course. And if you have stats, then you have to sit there and enter your you know, mu0 value, then enter your x bar value and your standard deviation and your sample size and so on. OK, 
okay? And then you go down to calculate and press enter. And there we have it. I just made up those numbers on the fly. You can see this is an extremely small p-value. Remember when this comes out, that p right there, that's your p-value. Speaking of which, let me go back and look at the other one for one prop z test. When you do that, I just made it up, so it doesn't really surprise me that it didn't work out very nicely. Here, let me just do that. When I go down to calculate, press enter, that value right there, p is your p-value. p hat is your sample proportion. And p0 is right there, it's 0 0.42. So there's a lot of P's on these ones for the proportion ones to keep track of. For the mean ones, it's less so. For the mean ones, there's only one P, and that's the P-value that comes out of it at the end. So I just made up stuff, so, um, I don't know, 50, 60. Here, I'll make it up again. I'm making up different numbers this time. And there we go, 0 0.0029, that's your P-value. Okay, so there's your test statistic. We use the t-test, and since we're using the t-test, it's obviously the t-distribution that we need for our distribution for finding these critical values. So if you look at the critical values, right here it's saying it's the t-distribution, and it's either plus or minus t-alpha over 2, negative t-alpha, or positive t-alpha for your critical values. So let me grab those. Now, where do we get those from? Well, you can use inverse t or the t-table. It won't be the bottom row. It'll just be the t-table. So inverse t or the t-table in general with um, degrees of freedom equals n minus 1, right? These would be t's, not z's. t, t, t. So these two are for a two-tailed test, this one's for a left-tailed test, and positive t-alpha is for a right-tailed test. All right. Then the last one, the worst one <laughs> in its way, is the one for variance or standard deviation. Right. So sigma squared, if you recall, is variance. Sigma is standard deviation. So we use sample variance to test population variance and sample standard deviation to test population standard deviation. Now the test statistic for this, scrolling down, is right here. Chi 0 squared equals n minus 1 times s squared over sigma 0 squared. And just like with the other ones, the one with the 0 attached, that's the one you assume is the, true from the null hypothesis. So p0, mu0, chi squared 0, those are assumed to be true from the null hypothesis. There, I just added that into those notes right there. p0 comes from h0, the null hypothesis. Mu0 comes from h0, the null hypothesis. And so does sigma0, and therefore sigma0 squared, because all that is is taking the standard deviation and squaring it to come up with the variance. All right, now the calculator. There isn't one, so calculator is not available on this one. All right, so you're stuck doing it all by hand. So you're going to have to do the classical method. Now, you might be given a computer model. That I love to do because then you don't have to worry about doing everything by hand. But nevertheless, um, if you did have to do it by hand, you shouldn't freak out because it actually isn't that hard of a statistic to find. The distribution would obviously be the chi-square distribution on this one, for sure. And then when we look at it, let's see, the chi-square distribution right here, your critical values depend on what kind of test you're looking at. So it's either chi-squared 1 minus alpha over 2 and chi-squared alpha over 2 for a two-tailed test, then chi-squared 1 minus alpha for a left-tailed, and chi-squared alpha for a right-tailed. So let me type that up. There we go. So these two, the first two, come with a two-tailed test. And then this one, chi-squared 1 minus alpha over 2, is a left-tailed test. And then chi-squared alpha is a right-tailed test. And those all come from the chi-square table with degrees of freedom equal to n minus 1. So you really have limited options for that one because you're only, um, you only can find values that are in this table. You can't find any other values unless you have a computer program available to you. All right, we're all done with that, and we have kind of regrouped and figured out the three main types of hypothesis tests we've learned. And remember, you don't have to really memorize a lot of it because it's all in these information sheets from your inferential statistics info packet. 
And remember, you're given that when you go to take your test. So you just have to really follow along and do every single thing, all the steps, right? All the steps are required. All the work is required. The pictures appropriately labeled and everything. If you can do that, then you're golden and you'll get lots of points because these questions are worth a lot of points.